Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It is me, your boy Rico No Suave, back with you here on the one, two, one, two. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I am so happy to actually have you back with me today. It is Wednesday. And this is the talk show, everybody. This is the talk show you all been waiting for because we have nothing but great things. It's me and the crew today rocking it, rocking it, rocking it. We want to thank everybody for your support. Your support has been awesome, man. It's been awesome. Don't forget, we have our journey on YouTube, everybody. Make sure you go to YouTube, Rico No Suave Show, and all of our platforms as well, too. So make sure you please go ahead and continue to support uh, as well, too. I also want to give a big shout out to E360. E360 TV has been doing wonders as far as for the show as well, too. So we're actually on all platforms when it comes to Apple TV. We're actually doing Amazon Fire Stick Roku. That's right. Roku. So make sure you actually go ahead and check out E360 TV as well. Everybody want to say now this is Autism Month, everyone. So we want to bring up that flyer for Autism Month. Yes. Yeah, so Autism Month Awareness Month. This is the last day, I should say, that we're celebrating, but if the month continues. So if you have a local organization, everybody, a local organization, please make sure you go ahead and support your local organization or even people that's around the world uh, as well, too, for Autism Awareness Month. All right. So we're going to keep that nice little logo up on the top and then yes that's what i do i come in and i go out yeah baby all right so there's a couple of people that's been actually you know journalists there's reporters there's broadcasters and two of the names that's been hitting you know the the industry real hard over plenty of years i should say and they both was fired um and unfortunately by them being fired Took a big hit between CNN and actually for Fox News. Don Lemon, as well as Tucker Carlson, was actually fired. And what do I feel about that? I'm just going to give you my feelings, but I also want to hear from you guys as well, too. What do you guys think about the firing? Now, I know over time that Don Lemon... I used to just laugh at this gentleman because he used to say some like his laugh was contagious uh, as well. And when you actually heard about him, you know, you hear hear his laugh or just hear about what's going on. You hate to hear about negativity that's actually going because as soon as negativity hits, you know, the mainstream, you know, it's going to blow up as well as, you know, Tucker Carlson. You know, when he got fired, there's always been a debate in regards to. What is he saying? Why is he saying certain things? Of course, he's he's speaking his mind. But I think both of these gentlemen here is actually have been speaking their mind for quite some time. And unfortunately, they got fired. Now, I'm hearing through, of course, the grapevine that Tucker Carlson, there was a deal that was actually being done with someone else and he didn't like it. So I guess he didn't like it. And there was words exchanged. And of course, they let him go. Uh, as well as Don Lemon as well. When we actually have Don Lemon actually said some things that was actually on air, this was not good uh, as well. So, you know, people are sensitive. People are, are, you know, you have to be careful in regards to what you say. But, of course, he said he denied it. I want to know what you guys think in the comments section. So, I wish them both well. Right. I do wish them both well. And I hope that, of course, and (laughs) you got to look at Rick Ross. Rick Ross put something. It was so funny. Rick Ross put something out there and say, hey, Don Lemon, I got you. I got a, I got a place for you. And I think it was a it was a joke. He said, you know, I got a place for you at Wingstop. (laughs) I'm like, how you think he's going to come from where he's coming from to actually come on the grill? But I think he was just messing around playing. But it was trying to bring some humor as far as to the whole action of him being fired we don't want no one to be fired especially the greatness of how these guys actually have been doing their job for over so many years but i wish them both well man i wish them both well and they know that they're going to get picked up somewhere else you know that they are because they are really big time idols when it comes to journalists being reporters and also you know t- uh, talk show hosts or tv show hosts as well too so um i wish them nothing well 
Uh, if Tucker Carson is not a journalist, please let's put him in a profession as he's more of a, a, a conspirator. Okay, Beatrice, thank you so much. I like that. If he's not a journalist, hey, I want I, I want to know you guys' thoughts, man. I want I want you guys to tell me what your guys' thoughts are as well, too. Um, the, the, the words have been flowing throughout by me actually just, that's why I put it all within a group. So if he's not a journalist, tell me exactly what he is. I think, I think he's actually, whatever he has, or whatever he is, man, he was basically an idol. So Don Lemon, Don Lemon was more, at least more professional, but in the end, his attitude got him fired. That's Beatrice again. John T. For free says it's real easy to lose a job these days. People are very unforgiving when it comes to celebrities or rich. All right. Thank you guys so much for your comments. Keep them flowing. I love this. Thank you guys so much. That is awesome, man. That is awesome. But I got to introduce this beautiful young lady. Hey, beautiful and strong. She is a podcast, everybody. She does have her own talk show. She is a martial arts professional. She is a professional MMA fighter. I, I want you guys to just give me 10 push-ups right now. And, and out of her, I want you guys to put your hands together. She's calling in from Florida today. Put your hands together for none other than Julia Dorney. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Julia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. How are you, love? How's it going? Woo -woo. The push-ups. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do my push-ups on kettlebells. I like to do it on kettlebells, so I'm actually trying to get my strength up. I How like you do doing, my love? And privacy, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to have you on the show today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Rico No Suave Talk Show. I'm so happy to actually have you here. Um, and before we get started, love, do you have any questions? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, any questions? <laughs> I got the questions. Do you have any shout outs that you want to give out to anyone out there? Well, let's see as, as, as we talk in how it goes. And then I might have a shout out. But for now, I'm just really curious what you are going to ask me <laughs> and what I'm going to answer and how the audience reacts to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i, well, actually, love I do so have a shout out i do have a shout out talk i just to can't take my mind be aware of the german tank julia dorney that moved from germany and left everything behind even her beloved ones to fucking kill it let's go let's go i like that <laughs> i like that come on Let's go. Let's go. See, I'm already pumped up, man. You getting me more pumped up, love. All right. You know what? Let's get it on. So when you were in Germany, you were very athletic. Tell us about, you know, your martial arts training in Germany. You know, to put it very simple, very easy. I've started at the age of seven. Like when I was seven, I started with judo. And then I just had this journey. I trusted the process. And then I'm, you know, I made it to Florida Coconut Creek. Now I'm training out of American Top Team, one of the best gyms in the world, to smash it this year and the following years. So this is my story in short. You can make it as long as you want to, love. We got an hour. So, <laughs> hey, so when you were training, when you were training in Germany, right, um, the process to be able to train with martial arts, you got to start from somewhere, right? So when you started as far as with your martial arts training, what came to mind that you wanted to actually start with martial arts? Where did that come from? Very good question. I, uh, I think like <laughs> back in the days, my parents were like, man, this girl has just too much energy. We have to do something about that. <laughs> also, she's a girl and, you know, in worst case, she has to fight herself. Okay, what about judo? Let's start with judo. Judo seems like to be a good idea, you know? And then I went there, I saw all the people, like the strong people being part of the national team, being like, you know, black bells and stuff. And I was like, I was so, man, I just wanted to be the same. So I was like, I'm just gonna keep pushing through, you know? And then I, this is how my journey started. I was always like so dedicated, so hardworking. Like even as a child, I remember one day, um, it was so hot in Germany and everybody was uh, getting off from school. And my mom would take me to the, you know, to the pool. And I was like, excuse me, we can go for one hour, but at night I have to go be, 
go practice. So right. this is how, you know, even at young age, this is how dedicated I was. It was like, what is that? Like, and now, you know, now I'm here and I'm just, man, I just, you know, I'm pumped up already. <laughs> yes, yes, that's hot. So when when you actually started to, uh, to, to train and you, of course, your influencers because you saw groups that was actually training or you, they were actually participant in um, judo and in the, in the fights and in that industry, when you actually started training, who was your first trainer? Who, who actually started to train you while you were young? How old were you as well? Well, as I said, I was seven and he was like a living legend. His, his name is Gerhard Schneider. And I remember when I came to this sports school, it was like a special school for sport education. When I told them, or when they got to know that Julie Dorney was trained by Gerhard Schneider, everybody uh -huh. was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, you guys are American. You really have no idea who this guy was, but I swear I he was imagine. a living legend. And he competed against the best of the world. He won everybody and he was my first coach and he saw my potential. Okay. And you know, I don't look that old. I know I'm 33 now. So can really? you imagine I've been in judo for 26 years now? Oh wow! And obviously, I you were like 23, judo. 24. Oh come on! Come on, let's go, let's go. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so when you were actually with my man, so he was training you. So how how many years did he train you for? Um, at least at least six until I got to the sports school and then still we were in touch. Uh, he would come to the, it was like the Olympic center for judo, right? So he okay. would come there and see him and be like, this is my girl. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. And yeah, of course, like even until today, that makes me so proud. Like he just, he did not just see my potential, but also he like taught me so many things about life, you know, because um, so many things that you learn in life are so adaptive to, to like a life process, you know, like in judo, yeah. In martial arts, you learn so many things like be respectful, be humble, yeah. uh, be gentle, be, you know, be, be water, be, be the best, best version of yourself like, all the time. And then I think I'm a good human, you know? Yeah. Hey, you, you look comfortable. I mean, because I know you're in Florida. Yeah, I would be comfortable, too, if I was in Florida as well, too. Um, so when it came down to, you know, the six years of training and your competitions did you have competitions during that time of your training with schneider are you serious asking this question no <laughs> of course i competed <laughs> i really competed all my life since i really started judo i was always competing i swear like i i had like more than 800 fights in judo at least wow and then 2015 when i started mma i had a a whole bunch of MMA fights. And then 2016, when I started sumo, even more sumo matches. And then in addition, I also fought BJJ and grappling. So overall, wow. I have, I've had so many fights in my life already. And then wow. of course, like the, my pro fights as an MMA fighter. So yes, I guess it's enough. It's yeah. enough. 800. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I fought. Um, that that's like, that's, that's a lot um 800 fights i'm mesmerized i just want to let you know that i'm really mesmerized in regards to 800 fights i do want to ask you about because when we talk about judo and we talk about martial arts now i you know of course when i when i look at that i know there's different um different areas when it comes to martial arts there's judo but isn't there other types of class of martial arts as well too that like jujitsu, right? There's jujitsu as well, too, uh, as well. How many did you actually um, practice? Or okay, I, I practice. I practice judo. I yeah. practice grappling. I practice yeah. boxing. I practice K1. I practice Muay Thai. Wow. I practice sumo wrestling. And oh my gosh, I swear there's, oh, I, I, I practice wrestling. So wow. I practice a lot. Like, you know, MMA fighters are the most complex you could only imagine. Wow. Wow. That that's a lot. I mean, man, I, I, I have to commend you. I'm sorry. I gotta commend you. I mean, it's I'm so pumped up 
right? That I know that there is a lot to actually, when it comes to, number one, when it comes to protecting yourself, you know, also, you go through that whole phase of knowing which one is best for you. Do you have a favorite when you were actually training with Schneider? And then you also start, you know, of course, getting into, you know, more into it. Was there a specific one that you really love while you were actually training? Of course. When it comes to like, you know, bad people that want to actually hurt you or something. Yeah. The first thing I say, because I'm a professional a athlete, I'm like, hey, be aware. Like, I'm warning you once. I might warn you twice if you're lucky. But right. third, you know. Um, but I just think like my entire like, you know, appearance, my body yeah. language, it's probably scary enough already. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't say that. <laughs> no, because I'm saying no. that because right now I'm smiling and obviously I'm blonde, blue eyed, whatever. And yeah. and people tend to underestimate that. Yeah, but you know, yeah. once I get that look, like I'm for real, I'm not even joking. I get wow. so serious, and yeah. he, he will just run away. I, I swear. Yeah, I'm not running. I just want. I want to be your friend. So uh, I'm. I'm away. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and you know, it's so uh, jujitsu, judo, sumo. Now you're the first. A woman that I've heard of that actually practiced uh, sumo wrestling, right? Tell me about because when I think of sumo, I'm thinking of the Hawaiians. I'm thinking of the big boys. It's like, mm, mm, and then ready to go at it. What was that like for you? Like, obviously, this is what everybody thinks. Okay, big guys wearing like a big diaper, and then right. I'm like coming. I'm like. Okay, this is first of all not a big diaper. It's called mawashi. Mawashi. It's a traditional Japanese thing, you know? Okay. And obviously, there's amateur and pro, and there's weight classes. As a pro man, there's usually just the open weight. And okay. in amateurs, there's weight classes. Unfortunately, I have no idea why this is like so old school, but there is no women's allowed in professional sumo wrestling, but in mm. amateur, there is. So because I was doing so good in any martial arts, my right. former coach, he's like, I actually have a little surprise for you. Um, <laughs> I signed you up for the for the German nationals. And um, I know you'll be you'll be always a little surprise, you know, like a little gift box. Yeah. I've only practiced once before I went there. And then I just I just made it like I, I became um, the 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 German champion, and then I don't know, I think the third or second in open division. So this is how the journey started. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. then I went to the European Championships. I was doing really successful there. I took the bronze medal. Nice. But then from there, they took they 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 sent me to the World Championships in Mongolia. And out of a sudden, I I got the fifth place. I lost to that Japanese girl who was so strong for the for the for the for the semifinal, which was really sad. Anyway, uh -huh. it was, you know, I just started like I was a beginner, but because of my judo roots and all my, you know, fighting, I was I was doing so good there. And then I already caught enough points to make it to the to the world games, which is like the Olympic games of non Olympic sports. Okay. And even there, I, I, I don't know how, but I managed to get like the fifth place. <laughs> wow. And this is how my judo uh, ju uh, sumo journey uh, kind of started. Uh, the year after, we went to California for the U.S. Sumo Open. Hi, Andrew. Thanks for inviting us. And nice. there I took the, the silver medal at the U.S. Open and the fourth place in the Open category. You know, it's like a, I have like 70, 70 kilos, which is probably like about 158 pounds or something. And even at that weight, I was able to manage to win against those big girls, which made me really proud. So apparently there must be some strength, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean, it, well it has to be mentality. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I'm just, I'm like super in awe, man. I'm like, I'm proud. I'm like, I'm proud and I'm pumped. Like you're like this inspiration of, you know, when it comes to, you know, you as a woman and empowerment, right. And for other young ladies as well too. And, you know, I'm still stuck on 800 fights. I mean, I, I'm still stuck on that. But at the same time, too, 
I'm looking at you as an icon for a lot of strong people in general, like people in general, like you are this, this strong, powerful, but nice, calm. I can relax. I can breathe right. I know how to meditate and basically, and you're also a protector too. Um, so if I'm looking for a security guard, you know who I'm calling. I'm calling you when I come to Florida. That's all I'm saying. So but you know what? I have to tell you one thing though. Talk to me. I feel like the, the market or the, the system, how it works in Germany yes. and in the US so different. Yes. Obviously I'm the, fo I'm from the former DDR, GDR. Okay. You no, know, it's a, so it's been a social country yes. and here it's different because now you have to go out and sell yourself and be loud and yes. you know, yes. and the way I was raised, maybe it's something to do with history after world war second or like be, be calm, you know, don't be too loud. Don't be so proud. Yeah. And you know, since I'm, since I came here, people tell me, Hey, you have that potential. You are, you are just nailing it. Like go out and sell yourself and be loud. Don't be humble. Like, you know, but I like, I just enjoy being humble. I don't enjoy being loud because I don't like when people are just over the top, but also at the same time, I don't should underestimate myself. Right. So right. it's, it's really so hard to balance, like from being from another continent, yes. being here now, uh, going for the, for the whatever big thing, you know, yes. <laughs> Yeah. And then like, what am I going to do? Like, am I, am I humble? But am I going to be the athlete that, that know how, how to do it? Or am I, am I, am I going to be loud and call people out and yell at them and be like, wow, I'm trash talking. I don't know. Yeah. So, I don't like that. Like yeah. I, you know, for that, you know, Julia, <laughs> you know, the one thing that I don't like, and I've seen this even for boxers here and, you know, I've seen where people talk, and it's just like talking like they have this game or this extra confidence or they're arrogant. I don't like that. I like more of the humble because that's just how I am. Like, I'm like, listen, I'm the one that likes to relax. I like to watch. I like to have my talent show people what I can do instead of trying to be out there all flashy and things like that. You know, right. it's just it, I, it is a difference. There is a difference. There is a yeah. difference in the U.S. when it comes to you know, getting up to that level. But at the same time, too, it's all about how you humble yourself. And also because there's other people that's going to be watching you. There's other people that's going to be following your footsteps. And if people are like, hey, you know, I'm going to relax. I'm going to enjoy, but I'm going to show you my talent and then go from there. So uh, I really like that you actually said that. That's very, that's very important. Uh, but, you so know, on the other athletes. hand, you have to see your – sorry that I'm interrupting, but on the sure. other hand, you have, to, you have to see the sport because I've proven that I'm a good athlete. But then people tell me, hey, you have to see it as a business now. It's a business. Like, you want to sell tickets, you want to make money, sure. so be loud. So for me, it's still – sometimes I feel like, man, I'm lost. I just want to be the way I am, like humble, go to the competition, be nice, appreciate yes. my opponent, appreciate yes. all the other fighters. Yes. And then at the same time, I have to sell tickets, right? Yeah. But what I think I when you do? sell, I think, love, when you sell tickets, you sell tickets based off of your talent, your experience, and things that you have done. That's going to sell you tickets. Now, of course, you might want to scream out to the crowd like you're in WWE and just be like, you know, hey, everybody, let's go, right? And be pumped up that way. But talking to the opponent, unless the appointment is really like, you know, like you said before, okay, you said it once, all right, be careful. The next time you say that, you know, then we're going to talk, right? But right. I think it's more of if people are pressing your buttons, then, yeah, of course, they want to see that, you know, that interaction between that person. But I say the, the most humblest person is the, is the winner out of all of it, you know, and I think the person that's quiet, I think that's good, you know, I think Isn't that's Isn't that really so like nice that. if they are quiet, if they're humble, if they're really gentle? Yes. And they know what they're capable of and then they enter whatever stage in whatever sport yeah. and they just smash it <laughs> yeah I love that. Just so nice but yes. also you have to show the people your potential that's why you need exposure in order yes. to get exposure you kind of need to be loud and probably nasty and you know what i mean like yes it's fine to balance it's like yin and yang you got to you got to Hey, love. So, you know, before we go to a commercial break in like in four minutes, I do want to talk a little bit about 
you were also on TV or you were actually kind of a journalist as well to yourself. Is that correct? Or you was actually in TV. You was into that, the whole media as well. Tell us a little bit about that. You're funny when you say I'm kind of in the media. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were in the media, but I'm, I want to make sure that I present you correctly. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's so fine because, you know, from my point of view, it's important to stand on two legs, right? It's better yes. to have two legs. Um, so that's why I always was into my sport. And obviously it was like, okay, when, whatever happens, let's say injury, whatever. Yes. It's good to have academic background, to actually study, to have a bachelor, master degree, whatever. And then this is what I did. So I was always in a professional sport. I did my, my university degrees. Um, I didn't do my PhD, which I should have probably done uh, because of my sport. Because I didn't know back then that COVID would happen and take two and a half years away from me. So by the time now, I could be a P, like a doctor, which would be nice. But anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm a journalist, corporate communicator. I studied uh, media studies and um, I've, I'm working for Deutsche Welle, which is an international broadcaster like BBC, CNN. Nice. So we, ha we have over 50 languages that we represent. And um, right now I'm working for the sport department. That's awesome. That's love. Okay, okay, okay. So how um so how long have you been working with uh with him? Um, I started my journalism career at the age of twenty. Nice. I had I did so many internships. I really worked for really good uh, media broadcasters within Germany. In twenty eighteen, I started working for Deutsche Welle, which was the year that I actually won the European Championships and the Euro and the World Championships. Yes. And um. Yeah, I that's, love it. That's, that's my journey. So I hope actually to to be able to after I'm done with my fighting yeah. to be working in, in the American media, obviously. Yeah. Oh, you will. You will. I have faith that you will do so, love. What is it? Some of the things that um, as far as now, you also done interviews as well with with people. Um, what is it that, you know, it's funny cause we're in it. I'm interviewing you right now. Right. And when you interview people, uh, were there any celebrities that you actually met, um, during your time in the broadcasting field? Many, many. Yeah. I, I, I met them through work to interviews that I did with them or articles that I've wrote, or even, you know, through my own podcast, it's called women hit harder, the female mm. power, power podcast. Yes. which obviously had men and women as guests. But yeah, my network developed so, so good with having those people on board. And obviously, you know, when you, you know it yourself, when you when you reporter, journalist, anchor, yes. moderator, whatever, yes. you meet so many great people. So obviously your network extends so good. And uh, see, I'm able, luckily, 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 that I know people that help me you know, yeah. in the States that, that, that give me contacts or help me network in Germany and, you know, in, in many other countries. Also, when I do the when I did the anchoring um, or the, you know, motorbike and car testings, like people from all over the world texted me, you know, so that's love. It's just a blessing. I, I really I'm, I'm so happy about everything, how it turned out in the end, you know? Yeah. I tell you, because you are humble, because you have this positive vibe, you have this glow about you that make people want to see you succeed. Um, and I think that's because you don't show that you're, you know, this, this, like this arrogant person. Like, it's good to have confidence, but when you actually have so much like arrogance, you know, it tends to turn people away. And then some people just like the drama, <clears throat> excuse me, in general. So, <laughs> I love what you're doing, and I, I appreciate the people that actually helped you get to where you're at um, right now. Love, we are going to take a quick break, right? Everybody, you already know my girl, Julia Dorney, professional MMA fighter. She is strong. She is powerful, everybody. Let's get it on. All right, everybody, we'll be back in 30 seconds. Here we go.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. You already know it is your boy Rico No Suave. We Love have none it. other. Well, Rico No Suave, baby, and we have none other than the beautiful, the beautiful Julia Dorney, professional MMA fighter. Yes, baby, let's go. Hey, Julia, are you having a good time so far, love? Yes, I do. I do. Thank you so much. It's hey, a no great problem. honor. I really like it. Please uh, send some sunshine and also warm weather when you get a chance in a bottle. I want to give you my address so you can send it to me. It's cold here in Chicago, that. love. Please do it. Do Please. That. All right. So let's keep it going. Now, we were talking a little bit about, you know, as far as uh, the, your, your media career. Um, and of course, we definitely know that you are going to be that that great journalist and that person after you finish your career with uh, MMA fighting. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty about the MMA fighting. Okay. Okay. So let's get it on. Now, when it comes to you being into the MMA, like you had 800 fights, right? Came to the U.S., of course. What is it like right now in regards to you ready to prepare for your your next fight so how was that going how was your training going for that my training honestly is just going so good i have so great coaches great support great training partners it's it's uh sometimes it's just war on the mats we don't you know <laughs> we don't give <laughs> presents it's just yeah. respecting each other and afterwards we're like friends right but yeah. everything knows it's uh, it's for the higher purpose so the training is going so good i'm fighting um in boston on the 30th of june for invicta which is fight news i think it's not been published yet but you were the first one to know all right and i'm so happy because you know you invicta is a great chance and if i'm able to to succeed there I, okay. I hope I can make it into the UFC. And when this happens, I really hope that the UFC is going to fill up their featherweight divisions and I'll be the next Holly Holm. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. I'm pumped up, man. I'm pumped up about this. So, you know, because when you actually go now, I know there's different. Now, of course, I'm not a mma fighter or anything like that but i would love to be just to get on my kettlebells but when it comes to different levels of um being in the mma now i've heard like jujitsu uh and i've heard you know other types of classes there and i think we kind of talked about this before the difference between uh well in u.s i'm just going to talk about u.s in general um you've seen fights Right. And you've seen how it actually goes with, you know, different fighters. Where do you see yourself as far as some of your influencers or some of the fighters that you've seen? Do you compare yourself to any of like any of the fighters, uh, the women fighters as well? Obviously, everybody is an individual, but there's some inspirations out there for sure. You know, but mm -hmm. in order to be successful, you have to create your own brand. And yeah. obviously there's role models out there or trailblazers like Holly Holm, for example, you know, yeah. she's been so good. She's been around for so long. She's been so successful. She's been the, the best females, you know, in the world. But I feel like I'm, I could most likely be a newer, like younger, even better version of her, you know? So right. it, watch out for Julia Dorney, the German tank, because she's coming. That's she's right. here for you. You know? That's right, baby. That's right. Bring it on. Yes, that's right. So with you um, training, so, I mean, you're just like super fit. And we're going to show a couple of your photos uh, in a few. But when you're actually training and dieting, let's talk about the health piece of this, right? Because in order for you to actually stay energized, in order for you to be able to, you know, stay healthy and, you know, keep that golden figure that you have, how do you train like when you're training for a fight what does your dietary look like what does the nutrition look like for you <laughs> I, I could be i could be answering two things first of all i cannot tell you because then everybody could do it or okay. i could be like you know listen um just be good to your body you know yeah. eat as fresh as you can okay um eat, eat the most you know healthy food because 
your body's like, what am I supposed to do with this burger, with the bread and the sauce? And like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, I'm your environment, you know, like take care of me. So yeah. I feel like when I have like, you know, good meat, good carbs, good veggies, whatever, good, good vitamins, um, my body's like happy, you know? Yeah. So of course I'm training a lot and sometimes I'm craving food like, my body's like, hey, I need sugar, I need this, and I need that. I just have to understand, okay, there's probably a lack of carbs. So instead of taking sugar in, uh, I'm going to give them good carbs. Yeah. Not too many, obviously. So just enough, just on the edge. That's sometimes, awesome. Sometimes it's a leak of salt. Like your body is craving, like, how do you say, um, mikronährstoffe, like micro... <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah, not that's okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> no, I get it. You know? Yeah. So your body just craves whatever you want to crave it. You have to train it to say no, or let me substitute it with something else. Right. You, uh, one thing I can say throughout my dieting, because I started dieting at the age of 12. So okay. it's been over 20 years of dieting. Oh, wow. What's really interesting and the most important for your body is like, keep your insulin level constant. I see. Because yeah. when you have like lows, you will crave food. When you have abs, you will feel tired, you know? Yeah. Try to find food that has a good glycemic index or glycemic load. This is actually all of the secret. I think that I think you really hit it because a lot of the food that's here in the US is processed, right? A lot of it is actually processed, but when you talk about organic, you want to have something that's actually fresh. Right. Um, and I really like like, you know, there's farmers markets that you go to to be able to find some really great fresh foods. And you start, you know, start networking to make sure that, hey, you know, I, I need some fresh food in my life. And even right. though I love to cook as well, too, I, you know, I tend to try to go that organic route. But at the same time, too, I know, you know, I do like cheeseburgers. I ain't gonna lie. Um, so I do know I do what? Make a it's no problem. It's no problem every here and then. Yeah. It's not not just. You shouldn't do it on like a daily basis. But you know what? In regards to that processed food, it's interesting because in Germany, for example, I don't have a problem with, with any food except onions anyway. But like right. milk products are totally fine for me. Here in the States, I cannot have any milk products. I get outbreaks. I have inflammation in my body. And I'm not even joking. Like my friends wow. that have seen me, uh -huh. they know. I stopped taking those in and I feel so much better so much stronger like you know in order to get my milk i have almond milk or coconut milk now yeah, yeah. and you know i try to find sources even the meat every here and then of course i have meat which is like good meat like you know organic whatever yes and obviously because i'm training a lot i need to supplement my proteins that means yes. i try to have like beans or chickpeas or every like source of protein which is not not gene manipulated. Yeah, yeah. I'm so. with you. Yeah, I'm with you, man. It's, it's, so, it's so crazy. Like, when I go to different countries, you see exactly how they actually take care of their food. Like, when I went to Egypt, like, Egypt, the food was, everything was fresh. I think they have, like, the best water. <laughs> like, literally, like, I went to a different country, and you can definitely tell the difference between coming from the U.S., to another country as well too. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, man, the food, and you know, me being a, a, a foodie, you know, I'm like, this food is just like, did you just like kill this cow right in front of me and cook it and process it and just make it so good, right? It was just that good. So I'm with you on that. I, I'm totally with you when it comes to certain foods that you actually need, but it was good for you that you actually started when you were young. Like, not a lot of people start that way, you know, based off of how disciplined that you are coming up in life. So that's good. You know? But, you know, I also have to add something because it's important. Obviously, like sure. healthy food is expensive, especially here in the States. Yeah. And obviously not all the people have that luck to have that good income, you know, especially sure. when they have like a family, if they have two or three kids, a husband or whatever. Yeah. They cannot afford that healthy food, of course they want to be full they, they don't want to have cravings right so that's yes. why they buy that i'm gonna say like shitty food yeah i yeah. feel sorry for them because yeah. um you know even if they if they're willing or if they're trying to good uh, to eat clean or to eat healthy yeah they cannot afford it you're right so 
we cannot blame them like even though they know right. uh, obviously when you when your kids are hungry you would probably give them something <laughs> not left them let them starve right starve. right right you're right so, i mean it does start from home as well too right it does start from the home and basically based, based off of your culture and what you're so used to eating you know it right. just it just grows what it just grows on you no pun intended but it just grows on you right so it's it's something that you know people are are used to eating so you know i do have to give a a, a big shout out because there's someone in the comments that's saying that they miss you so there's um paulo bello silva that's actually saying hello it's me uh agatha you are beautiful and i miss you <laughs> thank you very much i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> so you know and it's uh and it's it's definitely it's definitely something that you know this person does does miss you john t for free also comes out with a uh comment says i hate how every fighter has to be so rude we were talking about you know being loud and things like that uh i hate how every fighter has to be so rude to hype up their fights i don't care if it gets more people to buy ticket it teaches kids that that is how fights are handled. Yeah, I mean, when you do have like those bullies, we talk about bullies, right? We talk about bullying, but we also talk about when people are just, you know, just so strong at the mouth, you know, that it doesn't really go. It doesn't really go anywhere. I have you know? to. I, I'm definitely agreeing on that because you have to understand, even though you want to sell tickets. Yes. You are still a role model like yes. kids, grown ups, everybody who's interested obviously is looking up to you right yeah and if you're being a good human most likely the others are going to pick up on that habit but if you're behaving shitty and like a total excuse me jerk right what is going to happen like what is our planet our world going to be in a few years if everybody's behaving like fucking shit exactly me. yeah no you you're right you're right coming from you as an mma fighter it's okay right <laughs> it's, I mean, we're it's doing the most damaging things every day, <laughs> like every day, every time, like in the fight, in the training, you know, so we could be technically best friends, I guess, but yeah. we're just being like rude and talking trash. No, yeah, we should be, you know, we should be so much better humans. Because Loving, the sport caring, and all of that. Loving, caring, respect for each other right. and enjoying each other's company. Right. right. And I think it makes everything stress-free right i think the blood uh the blood pressure will be down i think everybody can meditate and just enjoy each other's time and i think that's what it is you know it's it's all about respect for each other so my love we're going to take a quick break did you want to say something else did you want to say something yes else? i wanted to say that obviously you don't have to be best friends because when you fight against each other it means it's also your salary right so yeah. obviously you want to win but right. even then, it's it's just a matter of respect. This is at least how I see it, and I hope, and I'm sure there's many people out there who see it the same way. I mean, there's probably people that enjoy that trash talk, yellow press, whatever. Of course. But this is the other people. This is not us, right? So Correct. okay, you can go watch that, but we are on the other side. Excuse me. And I hope I'm not I'm not being rude, but this is just how I see it. This is the truth. Right, and I think I think that's that's correct though because. I just, um, well, I didn't, I saw the highlights of the fight for uh, Ryan Garcia and, and Davis. Um, the, the boxing match that just happened this past uh, weekend. And of course, there was a lot of trash talking that was actually happening. And then, um, I, you know, Garcia lost the fight. And at the end, they showed the picture of them standing side by side, respecting each other. And I kind of like that, right? I really love Always. that because it humbles you, right? It also humbles you and you're like, listen, I ain't talking no more. I'm just going to actually come in here, say what I want to say, and then in a good way, and then go from there. So everybody, Julia Dorney is here with us. Yeah, baby. Oh, my God. Yes, we are here. All right, love. I like that. I like that. So I'm, we're going to take a quick break, love, and I'm going to actually talk about what's coming up next. And what's coming up next, everybody, is next week we have none other than Evangelist and author Denise Jones is coming to the show, everybody. May 3rd, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are going to have a great time talking about her book and also talking about a lot of inspiration and positive and what she's doing for the community as well here on the Rico No Suave show. So make sure you guys tune in to our show 
next week. All right, let's get back. Let's get back because we only got a few minutes of fame up here because we have none other than Julia Dorney. Yes, everybody, if you're just checking in, hey, you're going to have to rewatch the whole thing from the beginning because, you know, we're almost done here. But I'm having a great time as far as with you, Julia. You're such an inspiration. You're such an inspiration. We, I do want to talk to you about your podcast. Um, yes, women, women hit, hit harder, harder, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's talk about that. So how did that come about? And also tell, tell us about everything about your podcast. Well, I, I think I mentioned the name. It's called the Women Hit Harder. Yep. The reason why I started is obviously to inspire people, not just women, like because even in women, there's the word man and all comes from you, man. So yes. we want to inspire people. Be like, hey, you just have that one life, you know, enjoy it, make the best of it, like, res like be appreciative and, you know, do it now. Don't do it tomorrow. Do it now if you have the chance, right? So this yeah. is how the idea started. Obviously, on Instagram, I have a lot of male followers. And in order to pick up the ladies out there, I was like, okay, we'll create that name. We'll create that show. And I, I'm so blessed. I'm really just so blessed that I had the greatest guests you could only imagine. Like, so great people. Like, man, probably just like your show. So oh, Women Hit Harder has been around since January as of 2020. Okay. And I'm so sorry for all the fans because I was so busy with my moving to the States and, you know, with a lot of stuff. I wasn't able to publish in the last, I think, four months. But there's a new episode coming on the 9th, no, on the 10th of May. So 10th of May, be ready, women hit harder. So far, it's only German, though. Only, I think, three or four episodes have been in English. But I'm trying. No, I'm actually planning to make <laughs> women hit harder in English. So okay. for American people who want to listen to Women Hit Harder, there will be English episodes. Awesome. Awesome. And also for, you know, as your podcast, when you're interviewing um, your guests, um, what is it about? I mean, are you interviewing them in regards to sports or is it only sports or what is, what is it about? You know, the mix has been extraordinary from like politicians to olympic champions to an astronaut to oh. an uh, forensic biologist to everything you could possibly imagine like um psychotherapists and actors and everything so because we wanted to know like hey what was your vision how did you plan your life how did you get there how what made you so successful how did you succeed Right. Was there like ups and downs? Obviously there were because this is life, right? But yeah. how did you manage to overcome that? And even for me, like every time I'm, as I'm asking my guests, hey, please tell me, what was your key learning in the last time or in the last year or whatever? And it's so interesting to exchange those like key learnings because for everybody it's so different, but kind of the same at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been just so crazy, really. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, and congratulations, you know, on that podcast as well. And, and of course, your fans love you. And of course, they will wait until you get back on when you're ready. Um, and, you know, of course, taking your taking your time and taking your pace of, you know, coming from Germany to the U.S., that's a big move. You know, it's not like going I'm from telling state you to that state. it's been <laughs> it's been so overwhelming. Like I moved here in December and I was like, Man, every day something new, like how the yeah. system works, how insurance works, yeah. how grocery shopping works and talking to people. You know, in Germany, you just take, call people or email that's really fast and easy. But here they keep you in the loop for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and you're just in the loop listening to that melody. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and, you know, obviously everything like indicating your direction when you drive a car. Okay. Yes. I'm blinking left because I'm going left right. here. People just don't care. They just don't do it. I'm like, man, <laughs> it's so easy to indicate where you're going, right? <laughs> Come on, don't be so selfish because yeah. it's of interest for other people where you're going in order to um, prevent um, accidents. Yes. I don't I know. Think, just, you, just you know, too much. You know, in Florida, I'm not, and I think you're talking about all the Florida drivers. And I have to say, I don't think they believe, I don't even know why they sell cars with blinkers um, because they don't have, they don't know how to work it. Because 
they just move over. Like when we in Chicago, when I see a Florida license plate, I'm like, oh, here we go. Please don't let me get behind that person. You know, in Germany, because I have a really dark and dry humor, there's uh -huh. a phrase that I used to love. It's like, um, I'm not blinking because it's none of your business where I'm going. <laughs> right. <laughs> And here it's really true, you know? <laughs> right. And you know, it's crazy because when I'm telling you, when I went to Florida and everybody just don't, they just, I'm like, why is there even like lanes? Why are there even lines here? Why yeah, right? it should just be an open road, right? I mean, just get over where you want to get over at. So, and, um, you know, I think I, I would basically, my blood pressure would be up in, in Egypt. Like in Egypt, there's no such thing as, you know, blinkers. There's only horns. Like people just honk, just a honk and just know you're getting too close. And But I'm this, like, man, the honk, is isn't that so funny? It would be so nice if there would be like a gentle honking. Hey, dude, excuse me. It's time for you to go. Or like, <laughs> dude, excuse me. Uh, you didn't indicate where you're going or dude, excuse me. I've waited 10 seconds. You, you should go. Be like, Hi, nice to meet you. There should be different kinds of horns because I think most, most of the time they're too aggressive and people yeah. put their hands on the steering wheel like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's where the blood pressure comes. That's where road rage comes into play when they're just holding it down. It's like having a heavy foot, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's awesome. Hey, so I heard also that you are doing something with Go Nuts. So you're actually endorsing Go Nuts, the product. Is that true? Because my man Landon. <laughs> Your man Landon. That's my yeah. guy Landon. He, yeah, that's my guy Landon. Better, so I heard about no. the Go Nuts. It's like, usually I don't like to do advertisement, but I have to say this product has really, 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 really convinced me because obviously when you train, when you're dieting, when you're like, you know, presenting your body because your body is your capital, whatever. Yes. You want to be, you want to be looking nice. You want to be looking, you know, soft, whatever. I don't know, as a girl, yes. at least, I don't know how the boys are. It, it's none of my business, but this like go bare, go nuts thing is just amazing because um, on like... With this one, you cannot cut yourself. You can take it in the water. The blade yeah. is going to last a year instead of buying new blades <clears throat> every two every two or three weeks. I don't know. Yeah. And in the end, it's actually better because you really save money. But the product is so nice because uh, you don't have like the, how do you say, the razor burns, ingrowns yeah. or anything like that. It's just super convincing. And <laughs> I really love it. Like I have to say that because it really helped me. It really helped me. And since I'm using it, I'm just so happy. I feel much, how do you say, much more um, comfortable going comfortable. out there. Because, yeah, yes. I used to have like razor, like the razor bombs. I'm like, man, I don't know. It's just annoying. And, you know, it, it's just whatever. But now, I'm like, let's go wherever. I don't care because I have Let's this, go nuts. Go nuts. I have go nuts. I have go bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go bear, right? <laughs> I like that, man. Congratulations on that. Yes, I know Landon is very happy to have you um, as far as using that product um, as well. So, you know, you know, we got five, five more minutes of fame here, love. Um, and I do want to show you uh, some of the photos. I want to show the audience in regards to how awesome you look, right? When it comes to you actually, you know, working out. Yep. Um, so let's get that full. Let's see the whole picture. There you go. Boom, man. Woo. There it is. There it is, man. So uh, who did this photo for you? It was Matt Burns at the PFL Challenger Series last year. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have more pictures? Oh, is this the only one you have? No, I have, uh, I have more. I have more. Oh. I love this one. This is awesome too. I love yes. this picture. Anya Dorney, my mother, is one of the greatest photographers of all time. I'm not just saying that because she's my mom. Sure. But because the the way she takes pictures, the way she sees like the the individual and the and the scenery, because she she really thinks a lot of the setting, right? Like it's they're so good. Yeah, yeah. We got another one. We got another one. Boom. I Boom. like this one. This is cool. Yes. Yeah. That is awesome. I like, like that beauty. one. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I like that. I like that. Was that all done in the same day? No. Well, the first one from Matt was um, 
obviously taken here in Florida and Orlando when I fought uh, in um, the Challenger Series in Orlando. Okay. And the other ones were taken in Germany, I think, not the same day, though. Okay. Okay. That's awesome, man. How long was your photo shoot? <laughs> you should know I'm really, really Im un impatient. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm giving everybody a hard time. I'm like, okay, let's get it done. I need to get out of here, you know? Because when... <laughs> It just drives me because I know it's a bad habit, but I'm really impatient. So things need to go fast and convenient. But well, yeah, this photo shoot was probably like though. two hours or two and a half hours or something. So oh, on the okay. edge. Yeah, that, that's that's that. Yeah, that's that's long time for you. I can definitely tell, especially if you're always on a go. And plus, if you're training and, you know, you always, you know, doing your training and stuff like that, you always are on top of things. Yeah, photo shoots, yeah, they take a, they take a while, unfortunately. See, my, no, yeah. my normal schedule when I was um, in Germany, for example, was like getting up, go train, go to work, go back to the gym, obviously eating sometimes, sleeping at night, go back to training. And my yeah. preparation here, when I, went, when I moved to the States, it was even crazier because I was working to Germany time. That means I had to get up at 3 a.m. in the morning wow. in order to make my nine o'clock shift in Germany and then I worked until 12 and then I went to the gym and I was just destroyed. I was so tired and it's so hard. You, your brain is not functioning really when you're so tired, right? Yeah. yeah. So then I went home. I, I kept working a little bit. I went back to the gym and I kept doing this for the last five months. Wow. And I'm telling you, I know what, what hard work means. Yes. In order yeah. to pay your bills and to, to do what you love and do the fighting, you have to, yeah, you have to work hard, man. It's not easy. It's not like you, have, you go out and you get it. It's like go out and fucking earn it. Right. Let's go. Let's go, man. You're like, you, 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 like I said, you're my inspiration, man. I'm like, I think after this show, I'm going to work out, man. I think I'm going to have to work out after this show for sure. I am like super pumped up. Hey, there's another thing before we get out of here. You did some volunteer work, right? You also yeah. did volunteer work as well, too. Tell us a little bit about the volunteer work that you've done. You know, for me, it's just so important because I've been, um, I'm going to say when I was younger, I was a victim of bullying myself. Okay. I don't know, because I was always different, I guess, like, I don't know, or special or people would always find something. In the end, I found out that the, that the boys who bullied me actually were in love with me and the girls were just jealous. But as a child, it's hard to see that, right? Yeah. So... <clears throat> That's why I feel like now I'm in the position, not just now, but even back then, I'm like, I'm in the position, I want to help people. I want to be the one telling you to fucking stop because the other person did not deserve that, you know, right. just because it's special or different or whatever, or has autism or whatever. Right. So I'm, I'm definitely getting out. And that's why this volunteer work was so important for me. Like one of the projects we did, for example, was in the judo community berlin you know um because we had pro like problems with violence and sexual uh assaultment yep so we uh -huh. worked on a Assault. concept yes we helped uh, we helped to create like a program to prevent people from that because we had a lot of cases actually with like sexual abusement and i was like i couldn't believe it you know and then for the victims obviously they, they question themselves, like, why did this happen to me? There must be a reason why it happened. And no, there's no fucking reason why right. someone is bullying you or sexual uh, arousal. Uh, no. uh, yes, exactly. Uh -huh. So we, we did this concept. Or for um, for the Arche, the Ark, it's like a, like a whatever, a community for kids and, yes. and, and grown-ups, you know, because when, they're people, uh, when their parents are not as rich and... They still want to have a good life. They go there. And we did some, um, like, training with them, like, self, self-encouragement self and self-defense and, you know, finding yes. a way to, to see yourself valuable and, you know, to have a good body language and, you know, go out and achieve your dreams and stuff. So this is, like, really important. And I'm really happy that I was, you know, that I was one of the role models and that was that I'm still am. And then people talk to me and like, Hey, I have something. Can I talk to you about it? And because you're the person that could actually solve that. And it's just super important that we need more of those volunteer people because we can just make the world a better place if people are more social like that, you know? 
Yes, I like that. I like that. I have to say, love, you are a gem of the world. You are a gem. You are a diamond in the rough. The reason why I say this is because, of course, we give back to the community. The one thing that you actually have helped people is we call these uh, in, in Chicago. We have after work programs or after school programs, right, where they teach self-defense, but they also show teach people how to respect each other, how to love each other and how to basically empower yourself to be kind, but also know how to be able to say, no, I don't like that in a positive way. I have something for you. This is for you. I have a shirt for you. I so have much. a Rico No Suave shirt for you. And this means a lot to me and us at the show to give this to you because you accepted, of course, number one, that you want to get interviewed. Number two is, is that everything that you've done, 800 fights is still in my head. I think I'm going to go to sleep and say, this young lady actually had 800 fights. And I'm like, I can't remember even if I even had eight, right? 800 fights actually took you through the world of self-defense, but also it, and big shout out to, you know, you growing up and being disciplined and knowing not to be out in the street doing anything bad, but knowing that you had to come home to be able to practice, focus, and look at where you're at right now. And all of the accolades when it also you becoming a journalist and knowing exactly what you want to do to show your love in the media, but also show your love as far as being a role model to everyone and stand humble. So this shirt means a lot. We welcome you to the Rico No Suave team. Oh yeah, baby. Yes, let's go. I hope you have my size there. I do, I do. I Yep, I do. I got your size. And of course, I'm gonna get your size after we come off the show, but I definitely will have this. But this is, <laughs> this is definitely for you, love. And thank you so much for being on the show. We're gonna actually put up your social media uh, we want to make sure everybody follows you, right, as well. This is Julia Dorney, at Julia Dorney on Instagram. So make sure you go to yes, Instagram, people, everybody. follow me, follow me. I'm, I'm glad to be an inspiration, to be a role model, and definitely keen to help you guys. If you need anything with personal or mental training, nutritional counseling, or whatever, I'm there. Like, you can go on my Instagram, go on my webpage, and we will make it work. That's we'll right. we'll help find you set your goals and, and if you want to be a part of a team here's the next one boom team dorney oh, baby yeah. team that's dorney. right let's go <laughs> let's go team dorney on facebook everybody make sure you go ahead and like everything and love everything that she's doing there make sure you go ahead and do that now last but not least of course she does have a website it's called julia dorney com. Yes, make yeah. sure you go on to our website. Now, I know it's in a different language. I was uh, going to say, I'm so your... sorry, it's German, but maybe you have the possibility to have it translated on your, in your browser. Yeah, you can actually translate it in Chrome. I know you can right. do that as well, too. I had to do that. So I'm like, unless I want to learn German, right? Um, so the website is beautiful, so make sure you guys go there. She's also on, we don't have this, but she's on YouTube as well too. So make sure you go to at Julia Dorney on YouTube. Subscribe to her channel. Make sure you watch everything and love everything. Send podcast. positive vibes as well. Yes. Awesome. Love, thank you so much for being on the show today. You've been awesome. You are great. I thank you. I really appreciate it. And it's good that you had me here because I feel like it's a good chance for me to put my name out in America in the United States of America, actually, and obviously on your show because you're special and Thank you also you. have like a good, you know, um, how do you say attitude in your show? You know, I've I've seen a few of your of, of your shows and I Thank really you. like it. And we should support each other with like our good, you know, um, yes. yeah, with our good ideologies. Yes, yes. I appreciate that. Love, I will let you go. We'll stay in touch. Everybody put your hands together for Julia Dorney. All right, my love. I'll see you later. Okay? Ciao, babe. Ciao. Talk to you later. All right, everybody. That was none other than my girl, Julia Dorney. Everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself today. Yes, we had a blast. And I'm once again, another level step up as far as with us. And yes, we got to show you our 
information as well too. We have our social media. Let's put our first one up. It is our website at www.thericonosuaveshow.com. Yes, make sure you go and follow us there. We have everything that you need on our website. Here's our next one. Boom. Yes, at Rico No Suave Show, everybody. Make sure you go ahead and follow us there. Do it now. If it's your first time, follow us on Instagram. Do it right now. Let's go. All right, you know Facebook asked to come back, so I said, okay, forget about it. All right, so we came back on Rico No Suave Show on Facebook. All right, here's the next one. Boom. Yes, our subscribers. We got subscribers, everybody. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our channel at Rico No Suave Show. Please go ahead and subscribe now. All right. Last but not least, we have Mixcloud. Mixcloud.com slash Rico No Suave Show. Yes, make sure you go there because it turns into a podcast. And if you like podcasts, and, you know, you like everything about podcasting, just go there and you'll have our archive there. Everybody, we got to get out of here. Thank you guys so much. And everybody that actually tuned in today, thank you guys so much. I will see you guys next week as we end off the show just like this.